How many guys know that the Apostle Paul is the one who said, I have fought the what? Good fight. You know what that implies? There's such thing as a bad fight. You ever been in a bad fight before? Right? I mean, a good fight, I guess, is one where you say you won, right? Because I never heard anybody walk away getting beat up and go, but it was a good fight. No, man, if you lost, wasn't anything good about it, all right? So don't even pretend. But a good fight, you would think, man, is a worthy fight. A bad fight, I would say the definition would be the wrong fight. Because even if you win the wrong fight, that was a bad fight. I mean, I think it'd be a little strange if, let's just say, I'm not a big Floyd, uh, what's his name, Mayweather, Merriweather, Fer, Mer, Fer, Floyd. Well, let's just say that Floyd, I'm not a big fan, but let's just say because he, he, you know, he's got some props, he's got some, he's got some resume going on. And so, you know, let, let's just say that he was on his way to the ring. On his way going down through there, he's all excited. He's all fired up because when he wins, he's going to make another trillion, you know, whatever it is that they make, you know, for these fights. And as he's going down, there's some fan, all right, who's over there, man, they, 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 they just, you know, just, just, just mouthing off and calling out. And Floyd stops and climbs over the rail and starts fighting the person over there in the stands, the fan. Well, the police come break it up. Floyd goes to jail. He doesn't get his money. How many guys think you go, but I won? How many guys would say, that was dumb, bro? You just lost out on millions, and not only did you lose out on millions, but now you're sitting in jail. You didn't win anything. How many of you know that there are a lot of people who say that they love Jesus, who say they've been saved by his grace, who are called to be more than conquerors, but God is looking down going, why are you fighting the wrong fight? It's in us as men to fight. You don't have to teach a little kid on the playground. They just fight. It's in us meant to conquer something, to win something, to dominate something. I mean, if I went around the room and said, just come on, let's just do an interview. How many guys, you just, you just love to lose. Nobody's going to say I love to lose. Nobody's going to say, you know what my favorite thing about life is? Third place, baby, third place. It's my ambition, third place. No, not me, man. I just want a participation trophy. That's all I need. Just way to go give. No, everybody wants to win. We want to win. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says that our wrestle, our struggle, is, against, is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the principalities of this dark world. The forces of evil in the heavenly realms, there's a struggle that's going on. Why do we get caught up in the wrong fights? When I was playing junior high football, which was big time, come on, junior high football, I mean, everybody goes to those games. Like, sometimes your mom, I mean, like a lot of people go to those junior high games, right? Man, this particular game, my parents were going to come. My grandparents were going to come because it was an out-of-town away game, and some family was kind of close to there. They were going to come and watch. I was so proud, just warming up, doing jumping jacks, looking around, waiting. Are they here yet? Stretching, trying to get out. Look, oh, there they are. I'm so excited. I couldn't believe it. I was so excited they came to watch me play junior high football. I got up there on the kickoff team, and we were getting ready. I was the guy who held the hands up like that. Everybody go. It's a power play. I mean, it's just a real position of authority nobody goes till I drop my hand it's just a cool responsibility and so there I am in junior high football hey! and go and everybody takes off they go running down the field I'm making sure if everybody's watching and I go and I just pick somebody out and then I just hit them I'm in junior high football what's up you know I'm tough he hits me back I hit him back he hits me, I hit him. He hits me, I hit him. We don't realize the play's been over. We don't realize the referee's blowing his whistle. We're in junior high, and we're going to prove how bad we are. I'm pushing him. He's pushing me. I'm pushing him. He's pushing me. Flag comes out. Kicks us out of the game on the opening play of the game. Can I just tell you right now what a walk of shame it is when you got to go back to the sideline in front of all your family who drove to the away, out-of-town, junior high football game, and you got kicked out on the opening play, kicking off, and all you're supposed to do is... <laughs> Not to mention, I wasn't even paying attention to who had the ball. I obviously didn't make the tackle. 
But worse than that, I got involved in a fight that had nothing to do with my mission. And now I'm walking back looking at everybody like, seriously, the first play of the game? And now we came all this way and we're going to sit here and watch you sit on the bench because you got in a fight on the kickoff team? I just wonder how many times the devil is laughing and mocking so many who name the name of Christ. And it's because we're over here involved in stuff that doesn't have anything to do with who you were created to be in Christ Jesus. That has nothing to do with the victories that God has planned for you. That has nothing to do with what God wants you to conquer and over. Nothing to do with it. But we've gotten sidetracked. We've gotten distracted. Listen, here's what we do know. Our lives are under attack. All right, there's, there's no convincing that needs to happen in that area. Our marriages are under attack. For those that are married, you can say, I can look at it and see how the devil wants to destroy my marriage. Our families are under attack. Our kids are under attack. For the young people, I see several young people in this room. So cool that you would be here tonight. You could just say in your own life how the devil's trying to attack you and rob you of your joy, your security, or your confidence, or your peace. Your life is under attack. Our finances are under attack. Come on, if you can't say amen, say ouch. You know I'm talking truth right now. Finances under attack. Health. Anybody had health attacks? Come on, let me just see your hand and say, man, I just feel like physically under attack. So the question is not whether or not we're under attack. Here's the question that's a little harder to answer. If we are under attack, but we know that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works in advance, which he prepared in advance for us to do, we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? Somebody say all things. Come on, shout all things. That's scripture right there. That's what scripture says. Scripture says that I'm more than a conqueror. Come on, say more than a conqueror. Tell your neighbor right now, you're more than a conqueror. Come on, tell him, you're more than a conqueror. Tell him, you're more than a conqueror. Then why are we going around under attack all defeated? That one's harder for me to answer. It's not a surprise that we're under attack. What's the surprise is, is that the God of the universe is for me. If he is on my side, if all of heaven is with me, why so many times do I feel defeated? Do I feel discouraged? Do I lack joy? Do I lack peace? And you know what? A lot of times in my life I look at it and it's because I've gotten distracted by the wrong fights. I've lost my focus of what it's all about, and, and I'm fighting things that God's never called me to fight. Some of you think that you have marriage issues, and you've got, you're, you're, man, if God would just help her. Lord, I need a miracle. Lord, would you just, just help her? Lord, if you could just, Lord, if she could learn to communicate, God. Oh, God. Lord, if you just help her to get that spirit of materialism out of her life, Lord. Oh, God. If you would just, Lord, if she would just quit talking so much, help me, Jesus. Lord, send the rest. Raptured in. Now, don't be saying amen too loud. This might be recorded, all right? And she'll recognize your amen. You know, she'll, I know that was you. A lot of times we can look at our marriage and we think, oh, man, there's this fight. There's this struggle. I just wish she, I just wish she. What if we step back and realize that sometimes what's going on is that we don't just have a communication problem. We have a spiritual warfare problem going on. See, what's interesting to me about guys is that, guys, and you know this is true, like we have all of these dreams and all of these, like, uh, ideas and these fascinations of being the hero, right? I mean, nobody had to teach us to do it. We were kind of, I've got a little four-year-old boy, Jordan. You just saw that, and, and, that picture of him. Yesterday, we were out in the yard killing bears with a wiffle ball bat. Yeah, we were. I didn't even have to teach it. Come on, Dad. I said, where are we going? He said, we're going bear hunting. I said, let's go. Come on. And we're going, he took his bat, and he just beat the snot out of a tree. Just beat the snot out of that tree. He goes, I got it. I'm like, all right, man, thanks. What else you want to do? He, it's just in him. He's like, I'm going to protect the house. I'm a warrior. I'm courageous. You know you've had thoughts like this sitting in church. You've just been sitting there before me. Somebody trying to come up in here and do anything to my pastor. You're not even listening to the sermon. You're just going, first thing I do. If they came from that way, double roundhouse to the back of his head, and 
Now, if he tried to come from the, from the back of the audience, you got all of these scenarios. Come on, you know how it, I, I do it too, man. I'm like, man, I'll, I'll go ninja all over them before they even know what, and then we'll pray for their salvation, you know, after that. But, because, man, I'm just going to break bad. I'm just going to do it. And then, like, at the house, you know, we think through scenarios like that. You can't, Dad, what was that? Don't you worry about that, son. I got you. I got you. That was just the wind. But in my mind, it just triggered all these thoughts. But if it wasn't just the wind, let me tell you what I would do. You got these scenarios, right? And then even when it happens, you grab the what, golf club, baseball bat, Q-tip, whatever it is. You're just going to grab something and start going through the house. Nervous. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. I got it. Stay in the room. I got it. Jesus, Jesus. You're just scared out of your mind. Find out it's the ice maker and you come back. Yeah. Everything's all right, baby. I got it. I got it. I got it. You with me, it's okay. You with me. You go out to eat. You see somebody, like, checking your wife out, kind of looking up, like, hey, I see you. I see you. I will take your napkin and destroy you with your own napkin if I have to. Don't you? Why? I'm protective. You know what's crazy, though? Is that the devil's having a heyday in our homes. And we won't stand up and fight. We won't stand up and fight. We won't go, not in my house. Instead, through media, through our own attitudes of leadership, what we're doing is we're kicking the door wide open and saying, enemy, come have your way with my family. Attack my kids. I won't do anything about it. Attack my marriage. I'll just start fighting her instead of fighting you. God, help us to be men of courage who refuse to lose that's the title of the talk and I'm going to go fast because I just want to pray together at the end but man I'm telling you this I'm telling you this right now everybody in this room it's not by chance that you're here I'm not saying that to be sensational I'm telling you because I believe it in my heart you're here because God's about to do something in your heart I really really believe that some of you have been serving Jesus for the last 95 years you know or whatever and praise the Lord for that some of y'all you've been serving Jesus for the last nine months some of y'all you got roped into coming because you heard you're gonna be shooting things and you're like all right all right let's go let's go friend brought you here you may not even have a walk with the Lord hey I'm pumped that you're here I commend you all for coming but I'm telling you're here because God wants to do something in your heart he wants you to be men of courage to live with a mindset that says, I refuse to lose. I refuse to lose. Man, there may be some things that I just, I just don't win in. Quiet game, Red Rover, you might get me. All right, Duck, Duck, Goose, man, you might just out, you might get me. All right, you might be a, name that tune. Man, you may get me. You know what, but there are some things I refuse to lose, and it is over my own walk with God and the responsibility of caring for my friends and family that God brings into my life. I refuse to lose. I refuse to lose. There's just this one story that I want to tell you. And uh, it's in the book of Kings. Let me just, let me read it to you. I don't know if you have your copy of God's Word with you. And if not, it's okay because we're going to have this on the screen. But I want to read it to you out of uh, 2 Kings chapter uh, 6. And a as you turn there, um, worship team, you can go ahead and come and get in place. Not because I'm done, but it's just good accountability for me. Like if you come up here, I'm going to think i got to hurry. All right, so just go ahead and come. 2 Kings chapter 6. Whenever I say God's word is, I want you to say good stuff, all right? God's word is? So let's get into it. Let's get it into us, and let's listen to what God is saying to us. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8. I love this story. I've preached this passage a number of times over the years, but I felt like God gave me specific words for specific people tonight. You just open your heart and see what God says to you. Amen? It says in verse 8, now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. 
the man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on that place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. Are you tracking with the story? Say, I am. Come on, are you tracking? Say, I am. So it says in verse 11, this enraged the king of Aram. So that's the enemy army of the people of God. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, tell me, which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord, the king, said one of his officers, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, that's the man of God. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Verse 13 says, go and find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back, he is in Dothan. Verse 14 says, then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. Somebody say surrounded. Come on, say surrounded. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. I'll pause. Because if you are just slightly, spiritually, perceptive enough, if you would have the courage to pause long enough to take your eyes off of the busyness and the chaos of just the world that we live in, the busyness of just stuff, job, work, bills, sports, hunting, stuff, responsibilities. Those things can distract us. I know that some of them are fine and good and important or whatever, but they can distract us from what the enemy's trying to do to us. And in the busyness of all of those things, we can be totally clueless and unaware of the fact that our own hearts and walks with God are under attack. And we're not doing anything about it. Our family is under attack. Your friends at your school are under attack. Under attack. And, and you're just so preoccupied. And it's like we spend all, these, all this money on security systems for our home. But then we don't turn it on. Or we, we spend all of this, this time, you know, trying to be like, oh, I'm going to protect. I'm going to defend. I'm going to. But then we are fighting the wrong fights. And we got to be careful, but if you'll step back, you'll see that the spiritual realities of life are the greater realities. In other words, we're not physical people who live in a spiritual world. We're spiritual beings who are right now housed or living in and hanging out in a physical world, but the spiritual reality is the greater reality. Life on this earth will come to an end, but you'll continue to live. You will exist somewhere. The Bible teaches us it's either heaven or it's hell. But you're an eternal being in that sense. You will rejoice forever. You will suffer forever. But we're spiritual beings at the core of who we are. We're not physical people who happen to have a spirit that's some kind of just like spiritual aspect of it. No, no, I'm a spiritual being housed in this body. And when the devil can get me sidetracked and focus just on the flesh and lose sight of the fact that there's a spiritual battle taking place for my own soul, for my own heart, for my own purity, for my own calling, for my own peace, is your peace under attack? For my own joy, is your joy under attack? Have we lost our, our mission that the enemy's trying to distract me to where I forget about the fact that my neighbor who lives next door to me doesn't know Jesus and the reason I live in that house is not because I like the color of the brick, but because God sent me there on assignment? To reach the people around me? And I'm caught up in, he mowed too far over onto my property line? And now I'm fighting with him instead of fighting for his soul? 
if we had paused long enough, we'd realize there's a battle, there's a fight going on. And unless I miss my guess, when you stop, the reason you don't want to stop is because have you ever felt like when you looked out the front window, you felt like the army was against you and you're like, that doesn't look good. And so you thought, I'm going to check this window. And then you looked out the side window, and guess what? The enemy's over there, too. You ever had a day like that? Something's like, man, got those bills, got that health report, got that news. And you're like, oh, man. And now I'm just going to look. And then, bam. You ever had a day like that? Come on, you ever had a week like that or a month like that? Some of us feel like, man, there it is. And so we're like, man, that's not good. I need, I need a way out. And you look, bam. There it is again. And it just feels like, man, everywhere I look, I am surrounded by pain. I'm surrounded by problems. I'm surrounded by my own anger. I'm surrounded by my own bitterness. I'm getting swallowed up by this fear. What if I lose my job? How am I going to take care of my family? Am I ever going to find a mate? Fear. I don't know who I'm supposed to be. I never had a dad. Tell me, this is who you are in Christ Jesus. And I've been on this search frantically looking for, who am I? Fear, insecurity. And man, just when you look around, man, it's just like you're surrounded, you're surrounded, you're surrounded, you're surrounded, you're surrounded, you're surrounded. And it so it says that the king of Aram said to go and find this man of God. Go and find him so that we can kill him. And so he sends all of his army to surround the place where Elisha was. And it says that Elisha's servant got up early the next morning and was like, whoa, uh oh. Uh-oh. Oh, we better run. We better, uh uh-oh, nowhere to run. Some of you can relate to that. You're wearing yourself out trying to find solutions with your natural mind on how you can fix this problem. Maybe it's a relationship with a son or a daughter that's strained. You've lost sleep over it. You've been trying to figure out how to restore it. It's not that you haven't prayed. Man, maybe you've done everything that you know to do. But the devil's robbing you of your joy or any sense of faith that that relationship can ever be reconciled. Because everything that you try, it seems like it's getting worse. Seems like it's getting worse. You're trying to get out of debt? (laughs) You're going deeper in debt. It's getting worse. Physically, man, this health condition is getting worse. I love what Elisha says to his servant. He says, hey, here's the deal. There are more with us than for us, than against us. And let me just tell you a couple of quick things I'm going to pull out. I believe the Lord dropped in my heart. I love what the servant said when he said, oh, my Lord, to Elisha, what are we going to do? Can I tell you that we is always stronger than me? I love the fact that you took time out of your life to come to an event like this if for no other reason to be reminded of that you are not in this battle alone. Come on, tell your friend right now, you are not in this battle alone. Tell them that right now. Go ahead, tell your friend, you are not in this battle alone. You're not in this battle alone. We is always stronger than me. Because, man, whenever I might be going through something on my own, right, burdens are halved, right, Victories are doubled when I realize I'm not by myself. And we love it. You know how that is when you're watching a game or something? Come on, you're both watching the game, and you're watching, they score a touchdown, you immediately turn to your boy, right? Did you see that? Did you see that? As if he's like, no, bro, I'm, I'm just hanging out here with my eyes closed. I'm not even watching the game. Of course I saw it. But what we're saying is share this with me. Yes. We is stronger than me. Oh, my Lord, what are we going to do? And then what do we always need? We need people who will encourage us. Because he said to him, don't be afraid. Tell your friend, don't be afraid. Come on, speak that over. Say, don't be afraid. Why? Because I need somebody to remind me every now and then when my flesh is getting the best of me, bro, you're not by yourself. You don't have to be afraid. And I'll be your encourager. 
Listen, you never know how God can use your encouragement to be the game changer for somebody else's situation. They may be about to throw in the towel, but a word of encouragement from you can change the course of their lives because you were there with them just to say, don't give up. Stay in the game. Be encouraged. Some of you are like, Biscotti, I need encouragement. You know what? You reap what you sow. Right? He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. If you need encouragement, start finding 10 people every single day that you can encourage. And then tell me how you feel at the end of the day. I guarantee you God's word is true. You yourself will be encouraged when you make it your point to be an encourager to others. You reap what you sow. He said, don't be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. I need people to encourage me. I don't want to be a lone ranger. I don't want to do this by myself. God didn't create us to be isolated. When you feel yourself pulling back, that's when you need to lean in. Don't, don't, don't isolate yourself. And then he said, those who are with us are more than those who are against us. I bet that his servant was like, huh, he must have gone to Bible college because they don't teach math at Bible college. He must, because, man, I don't know which window you're looking out and what you're seeing. But see, here's what a good friend does. A good friend will show you things that you can't even see because all of us have a me that I can't see. I need somebody who can look at my life and see things that I can't see on my own. Proverbs says all a man's ways are right in his own eyes. Listen, as men, everybody struggles with pride. I do think that men tend to struggle more so with pride because we are the, the best in the world armchair quarterbacks. You know I'm dialing up your address right now. You know I'm talking about you. You'll sit there talk, screaming at the TV, all you had to do. Talking to guys who are world-class athletes, you can't even do five jumping jacks, but you're going to tell somebody on TV how they should have run the play. And don't even start talking to you about politics. Well, what I would do. Let me tell you right now what I would do. Here's what I would do. It's like, hey, man, here's what you ought to do. You can't even get to church without World War III breaking out in your car on the way to church. Just get peace in your car and then worry about world peace. But we're just armchair quarterbacks. We're just good at it. I need a friend in my life who will speak into my life and sometimes say, hey, you don't look a whole lot like Jesus right now, Scotty. I need that. You need that. It's what helps me stay focused on the right fights so I don't get sidetracked with the wrong ones. I need a friend speaking in my life. And he said, I see stuff that you don't see. And then here's what he did. It's what we're about to do. Elisha prayed for his friend. Because I need people who will pray for me. I need people who will agree with me. Who will fight a spiritual fight with me. Because I believe that there are things that happen when we pray that don't when we don't. I believe that the Bible is true, that there's power in prayer. And if we will pray, I believe that God will respond and heaven will move on the things of earth when we call out to him. He says, when you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all of your heart, we need to be committed to prayer. We need people who will pray for us. And he said, God, open his eyes that he can see. Then if you could pull the verse back up, I just want to read it, the last one, because I love the, the part of this. It says, and Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that, they, that he may see. And it says, then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And you know what he's saying? God's not asking you to deny your current reality. God's not wanting you to go, no, my marriage is great. Everything's great. It's like, no, man, it stinks right now. She's about to leave you. Call it like it is. You look at, oh, no, everything's great on finances. No, nope, it's not. Things are not going well. You've overspent or a crisis happened or you lost your job. But no, that is not. God never asks us to deny our current reality. He asks us to focus on the greater reality. He didn't say there's nobody against us. No, bro, there's somebody against you. 
He just said, Lord, open his eyes and show him that those who are for us are more than those who are against us. Tonight, this could be the breakthrough that you needed was just to know that God is on your side and whatever you're facing, you're not facing it on your own, that God is with you. And as you look at it, you just know that God is saying, I've got you. I've got you. So if all of that is true, how can I live in victory? By fighting the right fight. How do we fight? Man, I fight by knowing what the sword of the Spirit, I, the Word of God, by knowing what it says. Listen, you've got to be committed to the Word, get the Word into you. You've got to pray. So you're like, I don't know how to pray. If you know how to talk, you know how to pray. It's talking to God. Tell Him your dreams. Tell Him your fears. Tell Him why you love Him. Tell Him why you're confused. Just talk to Him. Talk to Him about your situation and watch what God does when He walks into your situation. And don't give up. Stay committed to relationship. This is how I fight. I go get my, my fellows with me. I say, fight with me. Pray with me. Pray for me. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray together. Let's pray one for another. Let's encourage one another.